7.2 Applications of the Normal Distribution. Let's take a look at standardizing the normal random variable. And remember, when we standardize the variable, that means we're looking at z scores. Suppose that the random variable x is normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Then the random variable, which was z, remember that our z score was when we normalized the data, and remember that formula was x minus mu divided by sigma. So that random variable is normally distributed where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So the random variable z has a standard normal distribution. So again, this is our standard normal curve where our mean is zero and our standard deviation is one. So our z scores are those z values, those standard deviations along the x-axis. The table gives us the area under the standard normal curve for values to the left of a specified z-score, z, as shown in the figure. Okay, and we'll look at a table in, a, in an example, and I'll also give you a copy of the, example, of the table, and there's one um, in the My, My Labs Plus as well. All right, so an example of where we might use these um, normalized distributions is where we're looking at IQ scores. They can be modeled by a normal distribution where the mu, the mean, is 100 and the standard deviation is 15. So an individual whose IQ score is 120 is 1.33 standard deviations above the mean. So their z-score would be 1.33. That's how many standard deviations they are above the mean. All right, so let's take a look at how to read the z-score table. And here's the table that I was referring to earlier. And we're going to take a look at the z-score of 1.33. Now, these decimals inside the table represent the area under the curve. And remember that the area is basically the probability of that occurring. Okay, and so um, when we look at the area under the curve, uh, these areas are anything to the left of that z-score. Okay, so anywhere under the curve to the left of that z-score. So we're going to follow the first column, that's your ones and your tens, I'm sorry, your ones and your tenths place, and then across the top is your hundredths place. So we're going to find the 1.3, and then we're going to go across the top to find the 0 0.03, and wherever those two places intersect, that row of 1.3 and the column of 0 0.03, where they intersect, is the area under the curve at the z-score of 1.33 and all the area underneath to the left of that z-score. So that's 0 0.9082. So there's about a 91% chance that a randomly selected individual would have a z-score of 1.33 or less. All right, so here's another z-score table. Okay, and we're going to find the area under the normal curve that's to the right of 1.25. So when we find an area to the right, it's a little bit different because all of these percentages, all of these decimals represent the area to the left of that z-score. Okay, so we find our 1.2. So we find our row that says 1.2, and then we're going to find the column that's 0 0.05 because when we add those two decimals together, we get 1.25. So our intersection point is 0 0.8944. Okay, so the area to the right of 1.25 is 1 minus that decimal that we just found. Okay, so 1 minus 0 0.8944. So the area to the right, the area above 1.25 is about 10.5%. Okay. So keep in mind that these decimals inside the table represent the area to the left of that z-score, okay? So we can subtract it from one because remember the total area under the curve has to equal one. All right, so to find the area to the left of x, we shade the area to the left of x. So we have our x value, we shade the area to the left, 
and then we can convert that x to a z-score, which is why the z-scores are important, and then we can use the table to find the value that corresponds to that, and that will give us that area. If we want to find the area to the right, we shade the area to the right of x, but then remember, when we go to use the table, we convert to a z-score, when we go to use the table, we have to subtract it from 1 in order to get the area that is above that z-score. And then when we want to find the area between two x values, okay, it doesn't matter where those two x values are, but if we want to find the area between, then we shade in between, but remember that we, when we find those z-scores, that gives us the area to the left of that z-score. So we take the area of the z-score that's larger and we subtract the smaller area or the area of the smaller z-score from that one. Um, basically, we take the area of the z-score that's on the right-hand side and subtract from it the area of the z-score that's on the left-hand side. All right, finding the value of a normal random variable. First, we're going to draw a normal curve and shade the area corresponding to that proportion or probability or percentile, depending on what we're looking at. So draw the curve and shade. Then we're going to use the table to find the z-score that corresponds to that shaded area. And then we're going to obtain the normal value from the formula x equals mu plus z sigma, which z is your, um, your z-score. All right, so let's take a look, and I'm going to look at an example. The combined verbal and quantitative reasoning score on the GRE is normally distributed with mean 1049 and standard deviation 189. And you can check out the source for that information if you want. What is the score of a student whose percentile rank is at the 85th percentile? So we look for the z-score that corresponds to 85%. So we're looking inside the table, and I'll show you this in class. We're looking inside the table to find a 0 0.85, whatever value is closest to 0 0.85. And when we do that, we find that the z-score is 1.04. And you can actually look at the table that we used previously, on the first example where we used the table, you can see that 1.04 has, has an area of 0 0.8508. So that's the closest one to 85%. All right, so now we're going to take our mu, our z, and our sigma and plug them in to get the x value, that, that score of that student's um, GRE test. And so that that student got a 1246 on the GRE. <coughs> so that student, yeah. So a person who scores a 1246 on the GRE would rank in the 85th percentile. All right, let's take a look at another example. It is known that the length of a certain steel rod is normally distributed with a mean of 100 centimeters and a standard deviation of 0.45 centimeters. Suppose the manufacturer wants to accept 90% of all rods manufactured. Determine the length of rods that make up the middle 90% of all steel rods manufactured. And that'll tell us the lengths of the rods that they'll accept. All right, so we're looking at the area to the left of x sub 1 and to the right of x sub 2. And again, we want that to add up to 0.1. So half of 0.1 is 0.05. So each of those areas is 0.05 because everything in between will accept. All right, so we look for those z-scores. Okay, and you can use the table to find what those z-scores are going to be. And then we can find x sub 1 by plugging in our mean our z-score, and our standard deviation. So the lower limit is going to be 99.26 centimeters. And then we do the same thing with the higher z-score. So our upper limit is going to be 100.74 centimeters. 
So what this means is that the length of the steel rods that make up the middle 90% of all steel rods manufactured would have lengths between 99.26 and 100.74 centimeters. So they would accept any steel rods that are in between those two lengths. The notation Z sub alpha is the z-score such that the area under that standard normal curve to the right of z sub alpha is alpha. Okay, so the alpha is going to be the area of that z-score. Okay. And so here's your picture. So again, z sub alpha means that the area to the right of the curve, I'm sorry, to the right of the z-score under that curve is equal to alpha.